All right, everybody, welcome to the My Path podcast by Leadership. My name is Jonas Wolf. I am the founder of Leadership and regular host of this podcast. And for today's episode, I decide to invite my good friend and partner, Alex, to interview myself for us to glimpse into the work of leadership and why I start this podcast. Let's get started, Alex. Hey, it's great to be here. I'm honored to host this opening session of this podcast. It's very cool to see this getting off the ground. And, you know, I'm so excited for the listeners. I, I am a product manager, uh, so I, I work on products and advertising and technology, but that's kind of like what I do during the day. I also have been working with you, Jonas, for a while on uh, this thing we call leadership, and I'm very passionate about the intersection of technology and reach, so helping people get exposed to new ideas, new things. I think that it's very cool. Uh, that we're starting this because this is something I think is going to be majorly impactful. And Jonas, That's you know, right. like, yeah. And, you know, you, you were mentioning, right, that you founded Leadership and now you're launching this podcast. You're also a Forbes 30 under 30, man. And I think uh, an alumni of uh, World Economic Forum, the Global Shapers Program, that's there's a lot of stuff there. And I'd really like to know a bit more if you could tell everyone about how you got to achieve all of this. Thanks, Alex. Yes, so starting with a brief background about myself, I was born, raised in Germany, moved at a fairly young age with 19 to the US, not to study, but to work. And uh, eventually um, I got my college degree and uh, decided to venture into new territory. Uh, in a nutshell, I went to Hong Kong. Uh, I realized how much I didn't know about the world and decided to go all in on, on China and not only into China, but also to follow my dream and uh, grow myself. And as I like to call it, unleash myself in the startup ecosystem. And that's exactly what I did. Work with a really cool co-working space, Naked Hub, that was sold to WeWork. And then, um, yeah, ventured on to a uh, very impactful innovation and hackathon agency called Angel Hack and uh, help them to build the China market and grow from there into being their APEC director. Today, I uh, mainly work as a coach and develop courses because I realized what I care most about is to create deep impact through coaching, mentoring founders, and uh, going beyond that, yeah, helping people. There are so many times in life where I gotten stuck, where I wanted somebody to pull my hand or give me direction, give me advice. And that is also part why why launching this podcast. I very much believe that uh, we all together are responsible to unleash and grow the next generation of what I call entrepreneurial leaders. Mm. Yeah. I remember, I remember when we first talked about entrepreneurial leaders. I've always loved that concept because I think it's so important for companies and, you know, you know, I know a little bit about your story, but it's always nice to remember that that jump into uh, innovation and hackathon working uh, and really inspiring a lot of people in Beijing. That's how we met. And uh, it, fast forwarding to today and creating courses and you know working in the in China still building community. I, I know that's something that's been very robust in the leadership journey. I'm curious though as to in all of that now with your coaching and courses, what's the most important thing? What's the thing that really matters and is going to take up most of your mind space in the next one to three years, man? Fantastic question. So we built the leadership uh, community and he also big thanks to you, Alex, and everybody who contributed as, as mentors, as supporters, as friends, no matter what role. Uh, it's been a blast. Uh, um, you have been also part of the speaker of the Time to Change events here in Beijing offline, right? Us facilitating together leadership uh, boot camps online. And uh, my mission is to grow that movement and the community from China globally. Uh, next area to focus on will be Southeast Asia. And from there, we'll see. 
um, where where we are going, right? It's it's a very exciting path. That's why we also call it my path podcast because sometimes we don't know exactly where the where the path is going next. But focus area Southeast Asia global uh, part of that movement is the creation of this podcast and uh, also evolving the existing leadership boot camps uh, and trainings that we've been running since uh, 2020. Uh, into what I call uh, the PATH Guide and uh, the Influence Accelerator programs. Stay tuned for that. We'll be having announcements about that. Uh, we'll be opening a wait list, especially about the Influence Accelerator. Super excited. I believe it's going to be a game changer for founders, leaders, and people adjacent. It might be also super interesting for people in venture capital or people who want to go for non-profit career or engage in politics because wow with influence we can create so much good in this world yeah that's no doubt about that i think both of us have experienced that and it's it's really critical too because to build genuine influence you have to find your genuine path uh and i think that's something that's really fascinating about this podcast so i wanted to to go deeper and just you know, what's your vision for this podcast and this like upcoming a series of episodes? What what are listeners going to experience and, and why is it so relevant now in this moment? Awesome. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, man, like we are all on our path. It's very individual and we are evolving. We are growing over the last couple of years here in China and beyond, also running hackathons all around APEC and, of course, keeping relations with Europe and, 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 and US intact, I've seen so many people who felt lost in various stages of their life, including uh, myself. And uh, I very much believe that we need in-depth, authentic sharing and connecting people to powerful communities that actually care about you and where people can and want to help each other out. And um, yeah, for example, Alex, if we're looking back, uh, one thing that I always really, really, really appreciated was our mutual hikes together around Beijing to the Great Wall, to lakes, no matter if it involved camping or just a day outing, right? Uh, we always went deep, right? And um, I'm probably quite known in Beijing and beyond for being quite vulnerable, right? And also sharing what really bothers me, what also goes wrong and so on. And I want to bring this authentic spirit to this podcast and bring in-depth conversations that can, um, yeah, inspire each other and um, ignite many bright lights out there that people can see there's not only one path, there's not only the college path, there's not only the entrepreneurship path. It might not be for everybody, right? Maybe coaching is super exciting to you, but it's not something that you actually want to do full time, right? So maybe it can be a side hustle or something like that, right? There's many ways and so many paths. And I just want to shed a bit more light there and help people that way. And why now? I feel, well, now more than ever before, maybe people are confused about what path is suitable. Oh, There's so much pressure from families, money pressure. Many people lost their job recently. Tens of thousands of people in the US and, and, and around the world in technology, right? Uh, when big companies like Google and Tencent lay people off, well, that is, that is pretty painful because you believe those jobs are secure, right? And people are questioning, right? What's, what's going to happen for myself next? And uh, in what career can I thrive? In what career can I add most value to others? And uh, another big factor is uh, we both seen uh, the rise as well as uh, the opportunities and challenges of remote work. Uh, people uh, have now the chance even they are, you know, somewhere completely else around the world. Let's say, like somebody is in 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 Vietnam or Pakistan or in Nigeria, and and you can be working for a startup in Berlin, right? I mean, this is also exciting times and and opens more paths. There's uh, alternative routes to to enter fields like venture capital that. 
that were previously restricted for only a certain group of people, right? Or for yourself, Alex, one day I need to host you actually, because you reinvented yourself also several times over, right? And are now a leader um, in, in the product management field and, and a thought leader about all things remote work, right? And adding lots of value to people there. Um, yeah, so that being said, I think, you know, there's a lot that can be discussed, a lot that can be shared. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's funny, I, I think that last bit about people being lost is so right. I've been back in the U.S. for a few weeks and just observing the social trends uh, and talking to people, it does seem like we're at a moment in time when there's a need to figure out what the right path is because the old ways of doing things and being in the world no longer uh, hold up. The pace of change is just too fast and there's just too many things that are not the same as they were in our parents' day. And this has been happening for decades, but I think with the changes in big tech and also the upcoming AI revolution everybody's talking about, there is no doubt in my mind that we are indeed at the beginning of a new uh, era and there's going to be more people than ever who really need that that guidance so it makes sense and you know i i think that it's exciting because one of the things is we both know we've been in this forever that there's there's that thing that happens after the podcaster in extension that's the programs you mentioned earlier i'm super excited i think you know, we've worked together on these and now I think you're taking an amazing new direction. Can you tell people more about what they look like so that they get an idea of, you know, what they be getting themselves into? Because I think a lot of people want to know. Certainly, certainly, Alex. And to also recap what you said, right? Not only in the US, right? Even myself, I, I felt lost myself several times over. It was when I when I left the U.S. and came back to Germany to study, and uh, and then later, um, you know, when COVID started, and um, uh, we had to eventually uh, take a pivot with with Angel Hack, right? When I joined uh, Yodo One, the remote work gaming company, uh, which was supposed to be a contractor role in the beginning, and then turned quickly into a into into something full time, right? And then to eventually really embracing my path, but also they are feeling sometimes insecurity inside me, right? And uh, I spent the last two years, uh, yes, working a lot on the outside, but also doing a lot of deep internal reflection work. And especially the last couple of months, been reprogramming myself. And, and I can only say I'm I'm excited. I'm thrilled for what's ahead and uh, I want to help people also to break down barriers. So let's talk about it. Um, last year, I uh, had the privilege uh, to give a, a, a TEDx talk uh, here in Beijing. And uh, uh, it was titled, Embrace Your Unique Path. I make sure to, to link the official TEDx uh, YouTube link in, in, in the comments below as well. And that is the result of basically my last 16 years of working, as I said, I felt sometimes unsure or insecure even what path to take. Over the years, I experienced burnout. Alex, you were there in 2019 with Angel Hack when all of a sudden things gotten too much, right? Oh yeah, and, I remember that well. <laughs> yeah, and and it, it it taken you know I thought it taken weeks, but it actually taken months to get out of that, right? Um recently going through a deep valley of negativity in the last year, facing visa issues, nearly being kicked out of China, uh, lots of canceled uh, work projects that I was very excited about uh, in, 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 in the last year, also COVID related. And uh, I got locked in into COVID quarantine three times. Well, that clearly didn't feel good. And, and, I see the negative side of me that I've never, ever seen before. Sometimes I looked into the, so to say, mirror and observed myself. And I was like, who is this guy, right? Somebody who is usually so positive uh, become really, really, really negative, right? And mm -hmm. so no matter what our background is, no matter 
you know, what career study check marks, whatever it is we achieved, we all can face obstacles on our path. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the surface, though, all might look great, right? But there's this massive storm going on underneath. And um, yeah, that, that being said, you know, uh, for me, uh, mental and physical uh, uh, health went down. I had to pay the price for, for some of these struggles. And um, so I decided to, to, to go all in uh, and expand the framework that I shared at the, at the, at the TED Talk, right? And uh, help people to increase their clarity, add motivation, have a clear framework for self-accountability and implemented feedback loops, plus at the end, uh, tools and suggestions to increase your happiness while on your, on your path. And if you're wondering, PATH in the TED Talk, the PATH framework stands for purpose, action, tracking, and happiness. That's all I'm going to say right now. Uh, the second program is the uh, Influence Accelerator, and that evolved out of our mutual work. And the foundation, therefore, is the MPB, my personal brand program, and the Leadership Flagship Program. So combining those, because I believe influence is one of the most powerful tools out there that anybody can use to develop, uh, to use and develop in order to reach their goals faster on their leadership or entrepreneurship or whatever journey it is. And uh, think about it, right? Like so many roles need to attract clients. When I was in uh, HR, head of recruitment at Yodo One, well, it was a sales job as well. I had to convince people of the company. So it was a very outward looking role and my influence tremendously helped to attract talent including yourself right obviously we've been yeah. friends for a long time but i share publicly about yodo one right and that is also influence right so hr people need influence vcs need influence well founders need influence so much they need to hire find clients raise money they basically do all of it right so as an entrepreneur wow Influence. Uh, well, I think it's 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 one of the the top five things you need you need to do, and I think it's actually one of the biggest leverages you can uh, develop. Uh, some might be familiar with the Angelist founder Naval, who said that code and media are permissionless leverage. Uh, they are the leverage behind the new rich, and I fully agree. I see you nodding, Alex. You agree as well, right? Well, you're a genius content creator as well, and you got coding down. So envying you, right? You have both of those superpowers on your side. I, um, I'm pretty good on the influence side, but uh, uh, you know, always ask for help on, 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 on coding side, right? And I yeah. think influence is something that literally everybody um, can uh, develop. And uh, also, you know, myself have been involved in many purpose-driven ventures, projects over the last couple of years, and um, also for impact-driven leaders. Well, influence is a key tool to, to put our mission one, two, three, four, five, ten steps further ahead. Uh, also, when you guys, you and Kamala worked on, on She's On Point, also very uh, purpose-driven driven venture, right? Uh, clearly, um, it was very necessary for you guys to work on your influence, running events, growing your social media channels, and so on and so on. And um, yeah, um, what, what else to add? I mean, there's a lot more reasons. Maybe one more thing here is, uh, uh, especially for entrepreneurs or leaders who want to own and dominate one niche or create their own niche, well, you gotta you gotta be present in it, and influence is that magic word. Yeah, yeah, and you know it's so interesting because it's one of those things that I think our generation, our age group, we're almost the same age. It's kind of wild. Only like sometimes I forget the number fourteen, no, fifteen days apart, <laughs> and it's uh, you know it's. Um, it's something really interesting that 
we get it, but a lot of people still struggle with to, to get over that hurdle from, okay, I understand I need to do this to how can I do this and why should I do this? And, you know, and I see it, I see it a lot because, you know, in my work, I work in, in media broadly, mostly in, in advertising, now making a transition likely to marketing through email, but no matter what, it is so critical to be able to influence, and I, I like to call it, uh, you know, relationships at scale, really, and then, you know, having not leverage, because that sounds a little bit creepy, but at least impact on what happens at scale. And, and people need that help, really, to get from, I know this is important, but so is so many other things, to this is going to be a priority of mine that will change my life and will change all of the things around me, as it has for you and I. And, it, you know, you mentioned the, the TED Talk and you mentioned PATH. And I think that these two things are very interlinked, right? Because, you know, finding your path is really the first step, as you and I know, to ultimately uh, you know, be getting on um, your track to building influence, no matter what it's for. You had this experience recently because we built your uh, personal brand website in 2019, back when, when we were working on that kind of thing. Uh, my fiance Kamala and I, and and at that time you were the growth wolf. Now you're the Jonas wolf, and a lot's happened. Like uh, you know, what what would you say as you've gone through this pathfinding and you know understanding of yourself and development of your influence have been some of the things that you've now you can solidly say because I I committed to this and this became my more authentic self. I was able to achieve this. You mentioned one key word there, Alex, and that is to be your authentic self, right? And that is a journey, right? It's like, you know, peeling an onion, right? Taking all these layers off. And there's a lot of things to be considered, you know, society judgment, what's my background? How does my, you know, background actually fit uh, together with the, future person that I want to become and so on and so on and so on. So I think actually it's a, um, you know, growing your personal brand and developing your influence actually can be very much interlinked with deep personal development work um, down to the core of your being, right? And um, yeah, even yeah. tapping into our souls, right? Uh, I think, you know, there's so much inside us and, and often um, you know, sorry to say that, right? I have a lot of friends in academia as well, but I think for most people, actually, uh, they become more restricted and more limited through the process of going through university, right? All mm -hmm. of a sudden, you choose one university, you choose one, you know, program, uh, one major. In my case, it was international business. And then I chose the marketing and strategy major versus HR and versus finance. And, and same, it, I chosen back then Spanish over Chinese. Well, guess what? I ended up in China, nevertheless, right? And now I'm studying Spanish once again because I know Spanish is in my heart. I love the language, right? And, and so, you know, the path can be a wild ride, right? Um, yeah, so you, know, I, you can see I'm quite enthusiastic about this. Uh, it's It's been really beautiful, just diving deeper, being more and more honest with yourself, being super authentic, right? We started as the growth wolf because I thought, hey, it sounds so cool on social media, right? Wolf is my legit last name as written on the passport. Many people actually don't believe that or thought that was just a social media name. And that's the reason why I'm actually changing to the Jonas Wolf. Uh, the, because Jonas Wolf is taken on several platforms. So yeah. uh, that is, is available and uh, claimed that name. Um, yeah, that being said, um, but the growth wolf also had a, a meaning beyond sounding cool. And that was because uh, we, we did already a lot of deep work together in 2019. And, and um, my mission since then and still is to unleash entrepreneurial leaders. But what does it mean, right? That means to grow leaders, to grow ventures, 
Uh, back then, I also done some consulting around uh, developing uh, company cultures, right? So growing cultures, growing people, growing startups, launching startups, growing ideas. That was all around growth, right? But uh, um, this is not the main focus right now. You hear it, the very clear focus is the path and its influence. And I want to be my authentic self. 2023 is my year of truth. And I want to be as close to my truth and authenticity as I can. And, uh, and, and that's, that's the changes there. And so what has happened since? A little bit long-winded answer here coming to the point. Well, a lot has happened. Uh, maybe the most outstanding thing is um, uh, years ago, I said, one day I want to be on television. Well, I didn't only make it on television. I made it on television a couple of years ago with Angel Hack, but I just recently made it on television again, actually on the seven o'clock news of CCTV number one. And you mm. might have never heard about that if you're around the world, but it is equivalent of the BBC 7, 8 p.m. news or right. something like, you know, Fox News or CNN in the U.S. or right. ZDF, uh, uh, ZDF in, 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 in Germany. And uh, that is pretty crazy. It was literally seven o'clock headline news. There was a coverage of Seizing Pin. And then my commentary to that was streamed. And uh, there were dozens of people who reached out to me afterwards on WeChat who were like, hey, Jonas, I watch the news. I see you there. And I was like, I was amazed, right? And uh, yeah, people people were like going nuts over that, right? Uh, and I only, to be honest, realized afterwards how powerful that appearance was, right? And now mm -hmm. I want to help others to achieve that as well. And uh, there have been dozens of interviews that have been published as podcasts or um, yeah, in, in, in written form, in from academic papers to startup magazines uh, to blogs, you name it. Uh, beyond that, uh, well, there have been many invitations to be speakers at events, uh, most of it paid, right? And of course, the personal brand also was a big contributor in helping me to establish my coaching and training business. And as well to um, you know, sell out uh, the, the last, uh, my personal brand courses and, and others. And um, yeah, uh, these results are great. Uh, but uh, what is even more important to me is um, it helped me to advance my mission and my purpose and to do the work that I love. Nice. And yeah, there's a lot I could unpack in all that because, you know, it's so interesting now to think about, as we've said many times in this conversation already, the idea of paths and pre-made paths versus forging your own path. And uh, the, as you said, right, a lot of people choose to take this narrow path. And it, the results that you speak of are uh, evidence that when we do choose to take our own path, really amazing things, like you said, the intent to be on TV, making that a reality. I mean, people talk about things like manifesting, I don't know about all that, but what I do know is that when you follow your drumbeat or whatever you want to call it, that voice, that force inside of you, you increase the opportunities that you will have to reach the things that you really want because those two things come in alignment. And I think that's really fantastic. And for some people that, that pre-made path works well, but for more and more people, they're looking for something that helps them to be more authentic and to reach those goals that align with who they who they really are. So, you know, that that's something I'm sure people are wondering. I I always wondered it when I was a kid. I feel like I have some understanding of it now and I know your story, but I'm sure others are wondering a little bit like what helped you to get into that, into that sense of a path cuz I mean, if we go back 10 years or even a little bit around 10 years you were in university you were kind of set on that and now you're here uh yeah what 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 or who helped to get you on this path and accelerate it moving forward to where you are today 
Yeah, like man, like um, literally 10 years ago, actually, 2013, I started okay. university. Yeah. As you know, I've taken a, a different path from age 16 on. I started working when I was 16. Right. And uh, yeah, went to university in 2013 after those seven years of working in Germany in the US. And I would have never dreamed that, uh, you know, I am now where I am now. And I say that with, with pure gratitude and, and I feel there's been a lot of blessing, a lot of support. Uh, but the, you know, the, the secret sources, uh, it's been obviously a lot of hard work as for everything you want to achieve, you need to put in the action. And if you put it in, you see the results eventually, you know, compounding over time. And uh, if, if you don't put in the work, then, well, you're just not progressing, right? You're somewhere, you know, drifting along somewhere, right? Like floating down a river, but maybe uh, you end up uh, in uh, somewhere where you don't want to be, right? There's a turn off the river or so, right? Uh, I also love canoeing. Uh, so yeah, like uh, if you, you know, or you take a wrong street exit, right? Well, you end up in a wrong place, right? So it's, uh, it's about uh, putting in the hard work, taking ownership, knowing your direction, and uh, while you don't know your direction, I always say experiment a lot. It helped me a lot. And uh, what also helped me was uh, uh, taking lots of courses, studying, uh, finding uh, qualified mentors and coaches who have mm. walked the path before or can guide you from their unique perspective and, and support you along your journey. And uh, maybe most important uh, of all is... Uh, is to really reflect deeply because as I said, also myself, I found myself off my path and, uh, and, and reflection, um, you know, should help you to, to get back to that point, right? Especially if you do that in combination with coaches and, and a community around you uh, that can give you also accountability and, and that support that we mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's right. That's a, such an important element is the idea of uh, reflection and community, those two things together, because ultimately we were never really ourselves without other people. I mean, you can say, oh, I can be myself alone, but the reality is you need those other people to reflect and create the shared space that then lets you become the person uh, you want to be, and simultaneously, you do need that alone time and that reflection to make sure that what you're presenting to the world is really you. So it makes sense. And, you know, that's that, as we've talked about many times already, but uh, just to say it again, this is linked to influence. But I think beyond that, it's always something people want to know. Uh, there's no doubt about it in the world now. <laughs> I'm especially reminded of this because it's, you know, you and I lived in China. Now I live in Central Europe and it's just very different parts of the world. Every part of the world is getting more similar. And I think our age group is a lot more similar than our parents, but there really are different things that are important. Here in America, everybody wants to know how they can become an influencer. It's number one job. I'm not going to beat a dead horse on this one. You, Jonas, someone who has developed great influence and knows a thing or two about it, what would be your number one advice for someone on how to grow their influence? Great question, Alex. Uh, I think the probably most powerful yet also super underrated number one thing is to create your own thriving community. I'm so bullish on communities uh, for me, communities have been life-changing. I built some uh, youth leadership communities long time ago, uh, yeah, more than 15 years ago in, 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 in Germany. And um, since coming to China, um, well, uh, Startup Grind, Angel Hack, Leadership Now, those communities, they have been game changers and happy to elaborate here a bit more. Um, when we get started on a path, it might not be the easiest to, to start a new community from scratch, but it's doable. You build a community with she's on point, right? Um, leadership, obviously, there's been a background, but uh, we also build it again from scratch, right? right. And um, we have actually a, a whole bunch of fantastic case studies also 
of people starting new communities in various areas mm -hmm. from scratch. So uh, those case studies are being featured in the uh, Influence Accelerator by Leadership. And um, what I believe strongly everybody can do is to join existing communities and grow into a leadership role within them. Um, yeah. Well, I've done it at Angel Hack very clearly all the way to APEC director. And uh, you've grown uh, to a leadership role within Angel Hack, Alex. And I think, you know, um, for both of us, right, that those, you know, existing communities have been great platforms, right, to grow Ooh. and to develop influence. And also to, to add to what you, what you said earlier, uh, you mentioned the, the balancing act of the, you know, outside of things like community, mentors, other people, our support circle, and the inner work, the reflection side. That reminds me of the yin and yang logo that you also see in the leadership mm -hmm. logo, right? And mm -hmm. that's also part of influence, right? Uh, many people know I, I have been uh, inspired by Dao De Jing and, and uh, uh, the Chinese word Dao actually means path. And, mm -hmm. um, and so the, um, you know, yin and yang symbol represents that balance. And I very much believe in that. Um, even somebody's an introvert, building influence can be powerful for you because it can be your superpower. And there's so many ways to grow influence. And and especially those people who are introverted or who don't want to stand on stages and give speeches and be in front of TV. Well, there's so many ways to grow that influence in more subtle ways. And I'm excited to launch the next programs about that and help people and be a massive game changer. Together, we are stronger force for good. All right. That being said, Alex, passing the mic back to you. Yeah, I was just thinking about what you said, because I'm definitely a card carrying introvert myself. I, I mean, I, you know me, I've spoken many times in public, I'm pretty comfortable, but that's largely because I got lucky as a kid, uh, and got trained uh, as an actor. If I hadn't had that, I think I probably would never uh, have been a public speaker. So I I think it's so important is this point about this, because a lot of people struggle with this, I think, because they think that they have to be a certain way uh, that's depicted. Again, especially here, right? I mean, I'm talking on and on about the US because I haven't been here in a while. It's so funny to watch your country change. But my point in all this is just to say that I think it's really good that you are saying here that there's lots of different ways to grow influence, but that at end of day, it really comes down to uh, you know, finding a group of like-minded people and then, as you said, a community and then giving back to that and helping that create. And I can tell you firsthand, I've heard this from, even from content creators who create their own courses and bring people together. I've heard them say, we are looking for leaders because we can't do this forever on our own. And our ideal world is that the community uh, runs itself and then you know, there's opportunities even in that, right? So at all levels, totally. from that small community all the way up to, you know, as you said, politics, right? That's probably the most public arena in the world. Uh, there is this importance, right? And I think that it it starts with that one or two community actions. So Jonas, this has been amazing. I really am glad we could have this conversation. I'm honored again that I can be the beginning of this because you and I have had a long journey together and it's not over. As you said, I, I'm, I've gone a little bit quiet recently online and as I'm working on some new directions, not quite ready to share publicly, but I am excited because uh, I, we've done it together and we'll do it again, uh, building up influence and building up community. That being said, I don't want to leave you without any last important words you might want to share with the listeners. Is there anything else that people should know uh, in this podcast? Well, Alex, thank you for, for hosting me today, right? And I'm also seeing you're wearing the leadership uh, shirt, sure right? Am. Uh, the Sound honorary it. shirt. 
uh, I'm actually wearing, where is it? Uh, I'm wearing the wolf path shirt here, embracing nice. the, uh, the, the wolf path. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, i uh, really uh, grateful for you hosting the session today. And thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, this is not about us. This is about you. This is hopefully giving you some inspiration. And also hopefully many of you guys are looking forward to the next session, inviting you to subscribe, to stay tuned uh, for future sessions. I will be hosting in the next four um, episodes, different entrepreneurs to share their entrepreneurial paths. And after that, stay tuned. We'll be bringing a different vertical forward of people that we are hosting. So this is not only entrepreneurship focused. We are going beyond that. Stay tuned. It will be amazing. And I want to encourage everybody that we all come together and contribute to foster the next generation of purpose-driven, high-performing, and let's call it spiritually anchored, connected people and leaders. Because again, connected, we are achieving way more together. Let's go out there and embrace our unique path. Alex, thank you again. Thank you, Jonas. Here we go. Let's nice. go. Woo!